everybody, it's Will Venus. Welcome back to my channel and part two of Cobble Icons for Vera Duckworth. And so what I'll do is I'll pick off from, excuse me, <laughs> where we left off yesterday. So in yesterday's episode, uh, I covered the period of time from when Vera first entered the street right up until the year 2000. And so we'll pick up from there. And so after the, the transplant operation, Vera went on to make a full recovery, recovery and settled into ordinary life on the street. Um, which it, it was a bit like going through a circle because they'd gone from leaving number nine Cor Coronation Street to owning the Rovers and then back home again. So although while Spiro was still recovering from major surgery, Jack had a new extension built to the back of the house, uh, which extended the size of the kitchen, allowing them a little more, you know, a little, a little bit more of the, the luxury of space, uh, space which which Vera felt set her houses apart from the rest of the street once again. So they did the stone cladding first and now they've done the extension to the kitchen. Why not? Uh, Vera continued to work at the cafe and struck up a strong friendship with Frankie Baldwin. Now, Frankie Baldwin was Mike Baldwin's daughter-in-law. Uh, it did actually turn out that Danny Baldwin, played by Bradley Walsh, um, was Mike's son, but that, that's another revelation for another episode. And so um, we get into the final years of Vera on the street. Um, in 2007, Vera was restricted for most of the duration of the year due to an injury on her ankle. Uh, she was cared for mostly by Tyrone Dobbs and his girlfriend, Molly. You remember Molly? Molly Compton? She, yeah, she was crushed by the tram when it sort of careered into the shop in 2010. Remember that? Huge episode, another live episode. Uh, they bought Vera a baby monitor so Jack, Molly and Tyrone could talk to Vera while they were in the pub. So they'd gone out um, for the night and uh, just longed for a quick drink in the Rovers. Um, later, Jack and Vera's grandson, Paul Clayton, remember I mentioned him before in yesterday's episode? If you missed yesterday's episode, I'll link it up here. Or I say link it now, but yeah, I'll link it somewhere in a, in a card up here. Yeah, so Paul arrived on the street, but little did Vera know that Paul was only out to scam Jack and Vera. He scammed them out of money, steal them from Jack and blaming it actually on Tyrone. Vera was absolutely disappointed in Tyrone and Molly was absolutely adamant that Tyrone hadn't stolen the money but Vera refused to believe this of Molly and just could not believe that someone within her family, her own flesh and blood, could steal from her. She just refused to believe it. Uh, because Vera was just Vera, you know, trying to see the absolute best in her family whenever she could. And also in 2007, Jack and Vera celebrated their golden wedding anniversary with a party at the Rovers. Um, in August 2007, Vera decided that she and Jack felt they needed to go on the move again and their plan was to have their dream house in Blackpool. Now around the same time, Paul was forced to confess to Jack that he had stolen the money for the house that they'd saved. Uh, Jack was completely appalled, but again, keeping with the theme of, you know, shielding Vera from the truth, he kept it secret from Vera because he didn't want to get her hurt all over again. And he, again, told an untruth to spare her feelings. But Vera still desperately wanted to move to Blackpool, so Jack eventually told Vera that he had spent a lot of the money that they saved to help Paul buy his half of the restaurant. I think the restaurant was called Philandros? Philandros? And he co-owned that with the Ambatters, you remember that? But it just added the excuse that he'd spent it before he knew that they were going to Blackpool. Jack knew that if he told Vera the truth, she would be again heartbroken. And she was still greatly upset when she went to bed. Now, on the 22nd of July 2007, Granada Television, which is... I don't know if they're still called that now since they've got a new location in Media City or if they've been, if they've, you know, since they've been rebranded. Um, but that's the... Corey production team, they announced that Vera Duck was, was to be written out of the street as Liz Dawn wanted to leave the street following complications relating to chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which was previously known as emphysema. That's what Liz Dawn called it, but I'm not sure if those two are the same thing. If you, if anyone out there knows, please tell me in the comments. So after 34 years of the iconic character, uh, it was time to go. It was said at the time that the character's departure would come around about Christmas. And so throughout the second half of 2007 and the beginning of 2008, Vera expressed her urgency to make the, the Blackpool move happen. Eventually they found a house for them in Blackpool which was perfect for them. And so 
Vera's other dream of finally living in Blackpool was finally coming true. She, Jack, Tyrone and Molly started to pack things up, uh, you know, like packing up their the belongings and whatnot, and preparations began for the move. On the 18th of January 2008, Jack and Vera went to their new house in Blackpool to measure up the rooms for, you know, just in preparation for, you know, just get those little things out of the way before you move. So like measuring up for carpets, curtains, that kind of thing. After returning back to Coronation Street Rest and after a long day, Vera sat down and she just kind of relaxed, pulled off her shoes because she'd been complaining that day that her feet had been really uncomfortable. Uh, Vera told Jack that she loved him very, very much and she could never love anyone else the way she loved him. And she was kind of doing this thing where she would, you know that thing that you do where like, aren't you going to do the same? Aren't you going to say the same thing back? So a little bit reluctantly, Jack replied with the same. Uh, so he, to make her feel a bit more comfortable, he grabbed her slippers for her and said that he was going out to the Rovers for a short while just for a little, little drinky poo. Although I don't think Jack would call it that, like, I'm going for a pint. Vera did want him to stay with her, but he was like, I've been with you all day, we've been looking at houses, I need, you know, a breather. He said it wouldn't be long and it just, you know, needed some time to relax. Vera sat back in her chair and started to wind down after such an emotional day because if you think about it, a house move is one of the most stressful times in anyone's life. Uh, I know that I've been through it, I pretty much single-handedly moved to where I am now, so yeah, I can appreciate her exhaustion. But at the end of that scene, the look in her face, it was like she was quite hopeful for the future. So Jack went along to the Rovers, had a drink and then returned home and whilst he was on his way home, he started singing My Lady Love. And it was quite nice because he was quite in a sort of light-hearted, jovial mood singing that as he was going home. When he got in the house, Vera appeared to have fell asleep in the chair. Uh, he called out to her, asking if it, <laughs> you know, typical, this is just typical. Um, he called out to her, you know, saying, have you made my tea yet? Uh, he tried waking her, but he just couldn't seem to rouse her. And then he touched her hand. When he touched her hand, her hand felt very cold. And he realised at the time that, in the, like, the short time that he was away, just for a quick drink that she had passed away. Uh, I remember watching that and I was very upset because kind of at that moment, like in my mind, all of their history is like going at a really fast speed in my mind. So like all that I've just described in this episode and the episode previously, more the episode previously, like all of that history and it's just suddenly just gone and I mean I know this is all fictional but it just it's a testament to how good Corey makes their their show uh, I mean you would actually believe that these people were real and a lot of people do believe that they are real they don't understand that the names that they even that they have their character names and they're, they're played by actors and Jack kept repeating to himself, she hasn't left me, she hasn't left me, she hasn't left me. It, it was a bit more emotional than I'm trying to describe it, but yeah, another really poignant scene. And so after a little time, he'd realised that his wife had gone. Vera Duckworth passed away at age 70 and her funeral was held later on that month. And so this, for the time being, was the end of one of British TV's biggest double act. Um, Jack Duckworth would go on to live in the street for another two years before his time on the street came to an end and when actor Bill Tarmy decided when his time on the street was up uh, soon came the announcement that Bill Tarmy was to leave. Now I remember watching um, an interview, I think it might have been on ITV's This Morning or you know one of those talk show type programmes and I remember um, both of them actually saying, well, if one of us goes, we both go. And that didn't actually happen, but, you know, it's just the way it worked out. And I think it was Bill Tarmy that said um, they would quite like Jack and Peter to leave if they won the lottery. Because that would be like, um, more like a brilliant end to 30-odd years of 
of these characters and it would see them get the money that they so craved within their lifetime. Yeah, just like the ultimate happy ending, but it didn't play out that way. So, And so when Beltami decided he could no longer serve time as a Cory cast member due to actually similar health problems to Liz Don, uh, Jack would be written out of the show. Within the show, Jack was diagnosed with an incurable non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and on the 8th of November 2010, just a little over two years after Vera departed this world, Jack's time came to an end too. He actually sat in the same chair that Vera passed away in and passed away in the chair himself on his 74th birthday. Now this is where like the episodes like really got me emotional. Um, the way that Corey kind of filmed it, uh, it was like from Jack's perspective when like during uh, Jack's time, you know, going from this world into the next, Vera made an, another final appearance, but it was because Liz Dawn had came back, back from the dead, and Liz Dawn was playing Vera, and it was like a, a ghost, almost. Um, as with a lot of people, when they're dying, they feel that the loved ones are around them, you know, the, the other ones, loved ones that have departed. Uh, as Coronation Street tries to get the realism of, of real life, uh, they, they reflected this by allowing the character of Vera to be seen one last time through, like, through Jack's eyes. So, like, the viewers were getting to see what Jack's world was like at that moment in time. Do you know what I mean? Uh, Vera tells Jack that she'll be late for a bus, and as, how can I explain this? As Jack's spirit, if you like, was leaving this world into the next world, he gets out of the chair to have one last dance with Vera. Uh, Vera asks him, when did you go soft? And his reply was, I'll give you three guesses. And that brought to an end to cobble icons. I'm, I mean, I know that uh, the actors that played Jack and Vera have now gone. And of course that the characters have gone, but I really miss them because you can't really get more, you can't really get more quintessential than Jack and Vera for, for Corey. And so to round off this video, I thought we'd do a little bit of trivia for you. When they were filming Lizzie's final scenes, Liz Dawn, uh, there was actually three endings written. I couldn't find out why there was three endings written, but often when like there's like you're coming to the crux of a major storyline, they write three endings so that no one apart from a select few can know how it's going to end, so it doesn't really spoil it for anyone. Uh, but Liz Dawn said that it was going to be a very, very emotional film in Vera's death scenes, but she felt that it was the right thing to do for the character. Now, going back to when uh, Elizabeth Dawn was trying to think of a stage name because her real name was Sylvia Butterfield and when she was trying to think of a stage name, she actually stole something from one of her daughters. Uh, one of her daughter's uh, first names was Dawn Elizabeth and so what she did was she just swapped those names around and she became Elizabeth Dawn. And so from that moment in time, Sylvia Butterfield became known professionally as Elizabeth Dawn. Later on, shot into Liz Dawn. Uh, Liz Dawn passed away on the 25th of September 2017, aged 77, and Bill Tarmy passed away aged 71 in 2012. And yeah, that's the, the final ending to both the characters and the people behind the characters. And so this also brings me to the end of this episode and this half of Cobble Icons. Uh, if you've enjoyed this, please click subscribe because that's really important and hit the notification bell so that you're notified whenever I upload any videos in the hope that YouTube starts sending notification emails. Also, tell me in the comments what your favourite memories of Jack and Vera were. I would really, 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 really like to know uh, perhaps that there's some key points within their lives that I've missed Again, tell me in the comments, I'd really like to hear it. And I shall see you next Sunday at half past seven p.m. GMT. Um, apologies for uh, not being able to get it uploaded on time yesterday. Um, my editing software decided it wasn't going to work. It got to the end of 
exporting and then it said no one time the little thing was wrong so i had to do the whole thing again then upload it and then you know do all the bits that I need to on youtube so yes i will definitely have another episode ready for you at half past seven this sunday take care see you then Tarachok.